bring in Jim Bianco, Bianco Research. Jim, you could chime in on that if you want, but I want to start here. We have an election tomorrow, and without bringing politics into politics, let's bring politics into this, because rates fell a few weeks ago, 10-year, 4-3 to 3-6, whatever it was. They've recently, almost violently, popped back up. And, and the mark, stock market has moved with it. How much of that move in the bond and rate market is in expectation of a specific election outcome either way? I think only just the last couple of days to week or so has really been about the election. And you see it in what's called the move index. It's kind of the VIX of the bond market. It's at a one-year high. Volatility in the bond market is through the roof. As uh, there's expectations that, you know, there's maybe fiscal stimulus coming or, or spending coming. But whatever the election means for the markets, it's being focused in on the bond market. And I think all the other markets are taking their reaction to it. And last thing is, look at Friday's move and look at today's move. These are extraordinarily large moves that we've seen in the bond market. But in this environment, they're just kind of average for what we're expecting through the rest of the week. Do you see another reignition of inflation Either way, 50 basis point rate cut took some people by surprise. You had some politicians today, very high profile ones, calling for more rate cuts. No, neither candidate seems particularly concerned about debts or the deficits. Do you see inflation rearing its ugly head again in some form, Jim? Yeah, I do in 25. I think the problem with the 50 basis point cut was that it was a signal that the Fed it, to put it in Austin Goolsby's terms, uh, the Chicago Fed president, they've got hundreds of basis points to cut rates through 2020, through the end of 2025. And you've seen what interest rates have done. Look at what mortgage rates have done. They've gone straight up since the middle of September, right after the Fed cut. And this is the market, I think, just screaming at the Fed, whoa, too much. You're going to create an inflation problem. You're going to overstimulate an economy that doesn't need this much stimulation. And if you throw in that a Trump victory, we'll find out in 24, 48 hours, that we're going to be looking at tax cuts, deregulation and tariffs, we definitely don't need hundreds of basis points of rate cuts over the next year or so. And I think that the bond market's just screaming that this is just too much, which is why you've seen interest rates, long under yields, go straight up. So, so Jim... You, we really value your view here, and you're, you're talking about a couple of different things. I mean, the fundamental view that the economy is not as weak as people had thought, as the market had thought, but obviously the deficit dynamics that I think we, we certainly all focus on here. There's a credit dynamic, there's an issuance dynamic, so there's technical elements. But I also hear you saying bonds look interesting, um, and, and that actually, you know, in a world where we've had 20-plus re percent returns in the S&P, there's other things to do. I, where would you be in the bond market here? Because it sounds to me like you think rates could back up a little bit. I think there's a lot of investors that watch this show that have become Treasury market investors in the last couple of years, and they've enjoyed it. Um, and, and there's some fear of moving too far out on the rates curve. So where would you be? Well, yeah, you know, to put this into perspective, um, I'll channel my in inner Dr. Jeremy Siegel he, in his book, Stocks for the Long Run, which the edition of last year what should stocks return you from this moment forward? I know they've had two 20% year, years already, but re rational expectations are about a 6 to 8% return is on average what you should get. Well, if this is 2019 and you look at the bond market yielding somewhere between zero and two, we were screaming, Tina, there is no alternative. But this is late 2024 where the Bloomberg aggregate index is nearly 5%. You can get most of the re expected returns out of the stock market with a lot less risk, because in a bond market, a bad year is like down 1% or down zero or maybe up 1%. It's not a 20% correction like we saw in 2022. And so I think that's why you've seen investors get very interested in the bond market. Bond ETFs have already set a, a yearly record in terms of their inflows, and they still got two months to go to add to it. So I think that you've, if you want to look at what should you expect, I know most people expect 20% a month, but they're not going to get that. Uh, and, but if you are in that camp that, you know, a six, seven, eight percent return is reasonable, all of a sudden, if you look at the bond market, you could get the majority of that with a lot less risk. And that's why bonds are significant competition for the stock market right now. Jim Bianco, Bianco Research. Always appreciate your views and your straight talk, Jim. Thank you very much. I think I think uh, Jim was saying 20 percent a year, but you get you get yeah, you get his, you get a broader point. I, I, is there a trade here in, in bonds or anywhere? Sounds like Jim might have been advising Warren Buffett. 
right? So Warren wanted a, a, an easier path, and, and six to eight percent probably makes sense. And maybe, maybe, maybe Warren Buffett and maybe Jim are calling a top to the market. But it seems like the Fed doesn't want recessions anymore. It seems like they're trying to be so proactive that they don't want a recession. So they want to be early. I think they were late to cut, but it seems like there's a new Fed and a new sheriff in town. Who's that? I guess Powell. Because it's the same, but he's been the sheriff. Yeah, but he's a different Meet dynamic. the new boss. Different. I think he is the same, Tim. Well, different we dynamic. The old we, I don't know boss. if we're going to get fooled again by this one. I think <laughs> no one's going to fight the Fed. How, how, uh, I, I, I think we're at a place here where I think the Fed's going 25 basis points. And, and I think the Fed's probably relieved that the economy, at least at this point, and we know there are variable lags, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I, I do think that there is a fear that, that inflation still could be out there. And we've just talked about all those risks.